in my continuing never-ending series on Chapter 2's coverage of ions, molecules, and atoms. In this video, I present molecules and empirical formulas, valence electrons, ions, and electronegativity. We begin, of course, with a hilarious chemistry cat of the day that I stole from quickmean.com. Neutron wants to pay a tab. Bartender says, for you, no charge. Ha 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 ha. All right. So simply put, chemical formulas that show the actual numbers and names of all of the atoms in a molecule are called molecular formulas. In contrast, formulas that give only the relative ratios of each type of atom are called empirical formulas. To explain this, let's take a look at an example. The empirical formula of a compound whose molecules contain 12 carbon atoms, 14 hydrogen atoms, and 6 oxygen atoms is which of the following? So to do this, we take the atomic symbol for carbon, which is the letter C on the periodic table, write it down. We then add to its right the atomic symbol for hydrogen, which is H on the periodic table, and then to its right that of oxygen, and write it to the right, which is O on the periodic table. We then insert the numbers for each of these elements to the right as little subscripts to each of their rights. For example, next to carbon we'll put a little 12, to the right of the hydrogen we'll put a little 14, and to the right of the oxygen we'll put a little 6. So we're right here. Now this is a molecular formula. In other words, it tells us that the molecules for this compound actually do contain 12 carbon atoms, 14 hydrogens, and 6 oxygens per molecule. So if you were zooming in and staring at an individual molecule of that substance, it would have this exact formula and number of individual atoms. Now that's not what this question asks us to do. It asks us for the empirical formula. Now remember, the molecular formula is the actual number of atoms of each type that there are in an individual molecule, that substance. An empirical formula is what happens if you take each of these numbers and divide them by whatever number you need in order to get to the smallest possible whole number ratio. In this case, you can see that each of these is divisible by 2. So if I took each subscript number and divided it by 2, I would get this formula, C6H7O3. Now these numbers cannot be divisible by anything I can think of to come down to a smaller whole number ratio. I mean, you could divide it down and get into decimals, but that's not what we're doing. Empirical formulas look like this. This is the empirical formula for this molecule, which lines up with answer D. Now you might ask, why in the world do we care about empirical formulas? Well, I'll teach that to my university students in class. We now move on to this subject. What are valence electrons? So all elements have a certain number of total electrons, which is equal to their number of protons minus their charge. So if you have a totally neutral atom, that is, it has a zero charge, then its number of electrons that are each negatively charged is equal to its number of protons, which are positively charged. Make sense? With that said, not all electrons are the same. You see, there are two different types of electrons, valence electrons and core electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons found in the outermost layer of the element or the atom. So if an element were an apple, its valence electrons would be located on the apple's outer skin. All of the other electrons in the atom, located deeper down, are called core electrons. Now, as we'll discuss later on, when elements react with each other, it's almost always the valence electrons, the ones on the outer skin, that are exchanging or being shared, not the core electrons. So, how many valence electrons does an atom have? Well, for uncharged atoms in groups 1a, that's this column right here, all the way through 8a, so I'm excluding all of the elements in the D block. The D block is this red block of elements that have Bs next to their column numbers. So we're excluding the D block, okay? So if you ignore the D block and just focus on columns 1 and 2A, as well as 3A all the way through 8A, okay? The number of valence electrons is equal to the column number. For example, oxygen is in column 6A. So the total number of valence electrons it has is 6 Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and all of these others right here are in column 7A, so they have seven valence electrons. Hydrogen and on down are in column 1A, so they have one valence electron. Make sense? Good. With that said, we're now going to talk about ions. So atoms have the ability to gain or lose valence electrons, which happens frequently. Now, when this occurs, the atom's charge changes from being zero to being either positive or negative. But why would an atom want to gain or lose electrons? Well, generally speaking, all atoms want to feel like noble gases. Those are the elements in column 8A. That is, they all want to feel like they have eight valence electrons. This is called 
the octet rule. So atoms do this, that is, they attain a feeling electrically of having eight valence electrons by either gaining, losing, or sharing electrons. Now, whenever an atom gains electrons, it becomes negatively charged. Whenever it loses electrons, it becomes positively charged. Now, please remember, each time an element gains one electron, it moves one column to the right in terms of how it feels electrically. In contrast, each time an element loses one electron, it moves one column to the left in terms of how it feels electrically. When atoms become charged by gaining or losing electrons, we call those atoms ions. For example, the elements over here in column 7a are only one column away from column 8a. This means that these elements are going to want to inherit or steal or share one electron to gain a negative one charge and thereby shift one column to the right in order to feel like column eight, having a full octet. Make sense? By comparison, elements in column 6a are two columns away from the noble gas column. Ergo, they will try to steal or share two electrons to obtain a negative two charge to feel like the noble gases. By analogy, the elements over here in column 5a will want to be a negative three charge. Now, as we go beyond these elements, and I've ignored the transition metals as well as some of these lower elements because they're radioactive and sometimes do other strange, weird things and can sometimes attain different charges. I want to now focus on aluminum. Now you might look at aluminum and notice that it is one, two, three, four, five columns away from the nearest noble gas, argon. So you might think, Aluminum is going to want to gain five electrons, a negative five charge, in order to feel like it has a full octet, right? Wrong. You see, elements can lose electrons as well, that is, their outer valence electrons, and by doing so, move columns to the left to feel like the noble gas that precedes them on the periodic table. In other words, aluminum could lose one, two, and then one more, three electrons, so that it go backwards to the left, feeling like a neon, the noble gas that precedes it. And that is a lot easier of a journey. In other words, it's a lot easier to lose three electrons than it is to gain five electrons. Therefore, that is what aluminum does. So when aluminum bonds with other elements, it likes to gain a plus three charge and shift three columns to the left as opposed to five columns to the right. By analogy, elements in column 2A over here don't want to gain six electrons to have a negative six charge. Instead, it's much easier for them to lose electrons and shift just two columns to the left to attain that noble gas electron configuration of the noble gas that precedes them. So column two elements are going to attain plus two charges, shifting two elements to the left. And by comparison, column one metals are going to attain plus one charges. Hydrogen is interesting because it could attain one electron getting a negative one charge to feel like helium, moving one box to the right, or it could lose one electron to go one box backwards, thereby attaining the theoretical noble gas configuration of the noble gas that would be above helium. Now that noble gas doesn't exist. Nevertheless, it still has technically a noble gas configuration. So which of the two does hydrogen do? As it turns out, hydrogen can do either. It can be a negative one or a positive one, depending on what it's bonded to. We'll discuss that in more depth later on. So these are important things that I require you, my students, to memorize what charges each substance is going to want to attain and thereby what charge it will have when it becomes an ion. And all of that is driven by its desire, if elements have desires at least, to attain a noble gas configuration. In other words, to feel like column eight. We end then with this concept, electronegativity. So what is electronegativity? Well, electronegativity is an element's thirst for electrons. The more an element wants to steal electrons to feel like a noble gas, that is to gain a full octet, the more electronegative that atom is. As it turns out, on the periodic table, the halogens being all the way to the right are much thirstier for electrons. They want electrons because by gaining just one electron, they can shift one column to the right and feel like a noble gas. It should follow then that an atom's electronegativity, being its thirst for electrons, increases as you go up and to the right on the periodic table. We, of course, exclude the noble gases because they don't want any more electrons. They're at the perfect, just right Goldilocks amount of electrons. Therefore, fluorine is the most electronegative or most electron thirsty element, and francium way down here is the least. We finish then with a lecture problem. I want you to identify the more electronegative atom in each of the following pairs. Now, I'm not gonna show you the answer, but I'll let you try this on your own. Remember, the more electronegative atom is whichever of the two is further to the right and up 
on the periodic table.